Hey, welcome back, guys. This is Eight Man Breakdowns with Coach E. I'm Coach E. Let's get started. So today's episode is about speed option in eight man. Remember, I'm no expert. I'm just sharing my ideas and experiences. So let's get into it. Speed option in eight man. There's just a quick little gif cut up of Nebraska running a spread look uh, speed option. Actually, a little trips look. Uh, I believe that's from last year. All right. So we'll start off with speed option out of a spread formation. And I'll give you the details and a few what if situations here. So, all right, here we go. Here's a spread look. First, let me put the defense on, out there. So I'm going to put them in a 3-2 formation because the majority of teams we still see in, in uh, Kansas here are running a 3-2 defense. And I don't really know the reasoning for that. Um, maybe in a different episode, I'll go into what I think is the major reasons for that. But uh, probably, honestly, off the top of my head, I'd probably say eight out of the ten teams we played this year ran this defense. So it's still, like I said, the most common. Um, all right, anyway, let's get into speed option. Let's say we're going speed option right. All right, so in the spread look, we're going speed option right. Let's start with the right guard. So he is going to be reach blocking to the right linebacker. Nose is going to be reach blocking to the right side of the nose. The center is going to be reach blocking on the right side of the nose. The left guard is going to be reach blocking onto the left linebacker. So you're getting, you're hearing the pattern here where all our O line are reach blocking down the field. We're leaving these D ends. All right. Now let's move to the outside and I'll get into why we're leaving the D ends here in a minute. Uh, on the outside, the Y is going to scoop inside. The F is going to scoop inside. X is going to also scoop inside. At least they're going to try to anyway. All right, they're going to try to get inside um, and take care of the guys in coverage over top of them. All right. So we're leaving the DNs unblocked. If we're leaving this backside DN unblocked, we're running speed option right in this case. If this guy starts running us down for some reason, uh, we got a problem. First of all, we're too slow of running the play because we're trying to go outside fast. That's the reasoning why we're not blocking him. He shouldn't be able to run us down. Now, if he is, if he's too good, then we'll adjust. Honestly, we probably wouldn't run it out of this formation if they're staying in a 3-2 and the backside DN is hurting us. But if he really is and we wanted to continue running this, F would probably motion in or something or come to like a wing position and then help in there. And then we wouldn't worry about the safety as much. All right. All right, so now let's move into the actual speed option play here. So quarterback is going to be aiming. We we'll, always tell him the aiming point is the outside hip of the end man on our line of scrimmage. So in this case, the right guard is the end man. He's aiming right outside shade of him. All right, running back doesn't need to really get depth here because he's on the heels of the quarterback. I just tell him he needs to get wide. All right, he needs to keep space and don't go too fast because he's got to keep that three by one relationship. Honestly, I like running it out of the pistol a little more for the fact of he doesn't have to get depth at all. Now he's two yards behind, one to two yards behind, usually two for us. Um, and he doesn't have to worry about getting depth. He's just going to go fast, keep that three-by-one pitch relationship. And what I mean by that, he's always going to be one yard behind, three yards away. All right, so three-yard or three-by-one pitch relationship. Now here's our DN. So – as soon as the ball is snapped and he's aiming for the right hip, now the right guard is going down the field to block. Now our aiming point is outside shoulder of the DN, the right shoulder here. So that's where we're aiming. And I'll get into that. So why are we aiming for the right or outside shoulder, right shoulder in this case? Because a couple of reasons. First of all, if he starts to slow play and creeps out here, if you're attacking the inside shoulder, now he's in the pitch lane. You can't have that. Then you're asking for a fumble. So we're uh, we're attacking outside shoulder and for the fact that if he sits at all, now our if he just sits still, now our quarterback knows, okay, I'm still going to attack his outside shoulder and pitch off him once I get there. And another, the third reason for that is if you attack the middle of him, you're going to take on a huge hit. Now if you're attacking outside shoulder and then you step with your pitch, now you might not get hit very hard at all or if at all. You know, you could even avoid the hit and make him 
know, he he's just in a better situation overall, uh, in my opinion. So that's why we do that. All right. And I'll get into some what ifs here, uh, into this next one. Uh, so there you go. Let's move on to the next thing. So, yes. Okay. So now unbalance running speed option out of an unbalanced look and details and what ifs. All right. Let me first of all get into the details one more time. Let me put the defense out here. So they're going to be in a 3 2 again. Safety's over the top here. And our nose, I'm going to put him right here in the gap. Now, if you don't know why I do that, go check out my previous video, nose tackle alignment in the 3 2. I'll leave the link in the description. It'll go into much more detail of why I put him in the gap. All right, go check that out. Uh, so now let's get into the O line again. This time we're going to say, we went to the weak side last time, away from the twins and the spreads. So now we're going to go to the strong side. We're going to go this way, go right again. We're still going right. Um, that's just how I have the formation. Actually, let's let's flip it. Let's flip it. So we're going left. All right. So let's get into the blocking here. So we're going to start with the left guard here. He's got the angle on the nose. So he's going to block down on the nose. And at the same time, the center is going to reach block to the nose. So we're going to double up. The left guard is going to push, drive him, try to get him moved. If he gets him moved and he has the center uh, with a good position to take him by himself, now he's going to move up. If we don't get him moved at all, he's going to stay. All right, he's going to stay with him. Now, at the same time, our guard over, in this case, our right guard, who is now over on the unbalanced side, on this left side, he is going to reach block to the left side of the left linebacker. All right, X on the backside, depending on how wide this DN is playing and how good he is, in this case, um, he's wide, so we're not even going to put a hand on him. We're going to go right here to the corner. If he is good, that'd be the what if here. If he is a good DN backside, again, he's still giving us problems. Now we're going to put a hand on him, then try to release and get in front of the corner. Two hands on him for a second and then release just to slow him down just enough. That'll give us time to get outside. All right, so here's the guy we're pitching off of. Now let's say, or now let's get to these guys, the the Y. So the Y, I'm going to tell him, actually, in this case, I would flip and probably be my ex, but it doesn't matter. So for the Y in this case, I'm going to tell him he's running a quick slant, sell it, go block the, the safety. F, outside release, act like you're going to block the DN, and then – uh, flash to the left corner. You take him. So we got a little cross block action going on out here. All right. Now let's get into a what if situation. And this could be kind of tricky here. So let's do this. So now, if the DN, uh, this ain't tricky, I guess. Most DNs in three two defense play in the gap of the of the wing. All right. So he's still actually going to be going here. I don't know why I took that off. So here's the what if. What if the DN crashes? Through the A-gap, come on, through the A-gap, and they loop their linebacker on a stunt. So what if they do a stunt? All right, good question. I'm going to switch this around to show you. So now I always teach our linemen, we always teach our linemen, if he crosses your face, you block him. All right, so he comes here. Now it's basically like he was head up. I'm going to block him down. I got the angle on him since he crossed my face. I'm blocking him down. All right, now we'll let the guy loop around. Quarterback still is aiming point, that outside shade, outside hip of our end man, which is the guard over, All right? So then as soon as that linebacker is looping around and he commits, he's pitching off them. So there you go. There's the what if in this case. So he's going to pitch. Running back, once again, is three by one pitch relationship. You're going to catch the ball, get upfield as fast as we can. Um, and there you go. And then I guess the other what if I had on this situation was what if our left guard cannot get this guy moved? OK, well, like I said, then if you can't get him moved, you're just going to double and take him. Stay there. Yeah, we're leaving this guy unblocked, but now he's got to flow a long ways to get all the way to the pitch man. And he in this case, he'd be the only person left unaccounted for since we're pitching off the looping linebacker, even if let's go back. One last thing here. A 
Pokemon. Okay, so even if uh, we're pitching off the end and he's not looping, and and we can't get this guy blocked. Still, I like our chances. We have we're leaving one guy unblocked. Um, that's not accounted for because we're pitching off the DN. All right, so even then, and that's fast. If it's straight off the DN or if it's off the looping linebacker, it's going to be a fast pitch outside because we're attacking hard, and he's got a long ways to go to get to the backside, run our running back all the way down in the open field, and plus I'll take our chances one-on-one -on -one with our running back in open field on the outside off the linebacker trying to come from the backside. So there you go. There's some details and some what-ifs of – speed option in the spread look and the unbalanced look. So that's going to summarize speed option in the eight man for me. Uh, remember, I'm no expert. I'm just sharing ideas and experiences. But if you like what you saw, if you like what you've seen in other videos, please subscribe, hit the like button. And like always, thank you guys for watching.